Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. On the return, here's Tyler Scott. Oh, some strong running. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. Coming out of Ohio State, one of the top prospects in the NFL draft, and it was so big that they moved up in the draft to get him, to make sure that they had him. And, boys, he got the full package. Loves the game. Big-time arm. 4-4 speed. So good that another quarterback prospect said to him, what's it feel like to run 4-4? Everybody wants to be that fast. Fields passing on the first play from scrimmage. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And he goes out right around the 39. Five yards on the game's first play. Second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Now second and five. Now Fields going to keep it running left. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Throwing on third down, Fields. He's going to float this one deep right side. Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And he's going to be forced out of bounds inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It's early, but announcer cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games, too? Ah, oh, what the heck. And this defense, they're going to have to find some way to slow him down as this game goes on, because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Swift. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves sticking in the end zone on a running play. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. Just a four-play drive that time. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. Under center will be the Southern California native standing at 6'4", Sam Darnold. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. A first down throw, Darnold going underneath. He's got Hawkinson. So just three yards on the completion there. And it's second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. 
Seven yards there and a first down. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Here's a second and five. Again, it's Jones. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game. And it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 18 yards the gain for number 18. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They've worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much longer. And they've established a great balance so far, running, passing, doing what they want on offense. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. They go back to the ground with Jones. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. And now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. Toward the pylon, caught. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out in the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Jones. Diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. That's a great response here in this first quarter. And what I like about it is how they put this drive together. The other guy scored quickly to start the game, but this was smart football to not feel like you have to go out and score quickly yourself. So they worked the ball down the field, took their time, and finished with the touchdown run. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense 
They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's a one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Harrison will go in motion left. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. First play of the drive. Excellent run. Just sets up wash, rinse, repeat. Another first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Swift going to try up the middle. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. Another first down, this time on a gain of 19. He's settling in nicely here in the first quarter running the football. Remember, he already has the touchdown run. And you can feel the vibe, can't you? He's in unison with his offensive front. They are in concert together. So if you're flipping over to the other side of the line of scrimmage, they've got to be more physical and handle some of these gaps that have been created. Fields on first down. He finds his target, Allen. Touchdown, Chicago! Keenan Allen, 42 yards, and the Bears have taken the lead. And there they got him the ball, just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call, just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch, and he loves that, and he's going to carry that in at contract time. Now the point after try for Santos. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was Keenan Allen who finished it all off with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Donald's and a throw here caught by Addison. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Kyler Gordon stopped that play before it ever got going. Great job. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now Darnold. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, how about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. Now, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. And he is going to go down. He will be sacked on the final play of this first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7 our score. 
Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And here's Ryan right now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Pulled in at the 24. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return, and the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. The keeper there turning into a big play of 23 yards, and it moves the sticks. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Right back to Swift again on second down. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. But that's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. On first down, it's Fields. And that one complete downfield to Allen. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. 23 yards on the play. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A oh, one-two combination, looked pretty good. How about that? Kevin O'Connell clearly unhappy with that call, and he's thrown that red challenge flag out on the field. The previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's Carlson. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people round the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Now it's Fields. Forced out to his left. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Bears go up by two touchdowns. 
Well, CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team effort right now. And let's face it, I don't think he's done. We're still in the first half. There's a lot of time left to go. I don't know what they're going to do on the other side trying to slow him down. But right now, he's feeling it. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Darnold on first down. Completes this to Addison out left. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now a first down carry by Jones. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. No doubt about it. Really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Back to throw, Darnold. Buying time to his left. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. On third down, he obviously wants to throw the football, but there's nowhere to go with it, so he takes off and goes. And nowadays, to get to the first down marker, he blows right past it and picks up big yardage. Partner, that's a great bit of improvisation. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 41. Darnold now to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now a second and 10. Here's Darnold. He's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. It's Jervon Dexter who got in to drop him. Well, when you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football. So, to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they could pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. So, on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. 
And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. A lane opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of a first after a gain of about nine. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. And we've hit the two minute mark in this first half of action. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Fields now to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. He was looking to get that one to D.J. Moore, and it's third and short. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run here with Swift. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Fourth down, Corliss Waitman now on to punt. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. It'll be a 41-yard punt, give them five on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And out now come the Vikings. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive, first and 10. On first and 10, Darnold. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Montez Sweat. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, They've got no chance to win this game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Darnold. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Jefferson moving in motion left. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Here's Ryan right now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It's fielded at the 45. That'll go as a 39-yard punt, give him nine on the return, and it'll be a short field for the Bears as they take over first and 10. Now the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. There's really no reason to change what they've been doing to this point. They've got the lead. They've looked good this first half. I agree with you totally, and a lot of coordinators, play callers feel exactly the same way. Until you stop what I'm doing, 
Why should I make any changes? But there are a few that kind of outguess themselves or try to outguess the opponent. And they try to consider what they would do to take things away <laughs> and go to those plays right away. It'll be fun to watch when they get to the second half to see which way they go. Yeah, but to this point, it certainly hasn't been broke. We'll see if they try to fix anything. Good, strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Out of the gun, Fields. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Fields. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to seven. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As we send you down, sorry coach, we'll catch up with you after the game. We're gonna skip through halftime here and headed back to the field for the third quarter. We welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis on Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Darnold going underneath. He's got Hawkinson, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. To throw on second down is Darnold. They're going back to the same well, it's Hawkinson again. So nothing doing there, and that'll bring us to a third and four. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them 
and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. A play fake, and it's Darnold. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Andrew Billings with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there, it's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out, not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be first and ten as they take over. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that's complete to the right side. It's Allen. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On the option to give to Swift here. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 58 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven. Once again, it's Swift. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On third down, here comes Swift. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Fields. Throws left side, complete to Keenan Allen. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. The slot man in motion right. Fields tapping it forward, jet sweep. Oh, a good move at the... And he will score! Touchdown, Chicago! D.J. Moore, a 15-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. So the touchdown there and that play, the tap pass, so simple, Charles, on the face of it, but... What makes it so difficult for defenses to stop? I think it's the precision and the quickness in which the play occurs because the snap gets to the quarterback. He's essentially playing volleyball with it, just immediately just shoveling it forward. And when that receiver is at a full head of steam, if you don't take the edge away, he's got a chance to get to the corner and get upfield. But if you take the edge away, that's your chance to disrupt that play. And no disruption there, that's for sure, as it winds up six points.
Now after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. To throw is Darnold. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Montez Sweat getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. So one quick easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. These guys have punted four times already and they're staring at a fifth barring a conversion here on third down. Darnold. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Montez Sweat, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. Looks like another empty possession here, partner, and I don't think with three scores down in the third quarter, they can truly afford any more the rest of the way. No, especially the way their offense is sputtering. I, I think you're exactly right. they got to find some answers quickly. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. It'll be a 39 yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 79 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. Now he just danced away from that one defender on his way to a gain of about seven yards. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he's got this down to the 35. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways They've gotten their receivers open so far. It's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. On the option to give to Swift here. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. 
We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. From the 34-yard line, here's a second down and nine. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And bulldozing his way through. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. DeAndre Swift with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears start to open this lead even wider here in the fourth. Oh, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back through the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Kene Nwagu now out of his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately... The second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Darnold from the gun. Addison hauls it in. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. A first down throw, Darnold. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A very solid gain of 27. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants his lead to stay right where it is. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now it's Darnold. Over the middle and complete to Addison. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that's going to bring up second down. Again, Darnold out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. 
And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Now Darnold. There's Addison. Touchdown, Vikings. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Vikings get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth-quarter deficit. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Harris, it'll go in motion left. Now they'll fake it there on the jet sweep, and instead, here's Swift. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 152 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. They'll run right here with Swift. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Second and nine.
They will run straight ahead with Swift. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. On the handoff, this is Swift. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team He's going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Here's Swift, and he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw in here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even send in a running play here, I don't believe. I think they go ahead and try and throw it for a touchdown. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.